Good morning, and welcome to this virtual worship service of Zion Lutheran Church. It is May 24th, 2020, which means this is the seventh Sunday of Easter, and that is the last Sunday of what we call the Easter season in the Christian church. And so today we continue to focus one last time on the resurrection of our Savior Jesus with our theme being, Christ is risen, live with great expectations of glory. Today we have an opportunity to see what Jesus' resurrection means for us in the fact that Jesus has gained for us a life eternal and that even now that has an effect on how we live our lives. May God bless us as we do that today through the word of God that he has caused to be written for our learning in his holy scriptures. Today as you worship, please again use the worship folder that you have and the links for the music will be in that worship folder. And as you come to those times of singing, please pause the recording. And then after you've sung, then come back to the recording after that. If you are a guest who's joined us today through our website, please note that that worship folder is linked there, so you can also follow along. And so are all the the music pieces that will be used in this worship service. There will be a couple of pieces today that will actually be sung by choirs. And so you might want to just quietly meditate as they sing rather than singing along today. Let us then begin our worship service as we bring in with our opening hymn number 149 on the NPH Downloads link. It is Christ the Lord is risen today as we continue to celebrate Easter. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. We have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, our Savior, was taken up in glory and intercedes for us at your right hand. Through your living and abiding word, give us hearts to know him and faith to follow where he has gone, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We give our attention now to the word of God. Our first lesson from God's Word is from the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel, chapter 1, reading verses 21 to 28. The main character in this section is Hannah, a woman who was troubled and had a lot of anxiety in her life because she wasn't able to have any children. But she had faith, and in trust and faith, she begged the Lord to answer her pleas. And in His grace, the Lord answered her plea and took away her trouble, and her anxiety. We see here her response as she gives her son to the Lord. May the Lord bless us as we see this to realize we also have troubles in our life. And when those troubles come, to remain faithful and trust our Lord who helps us in every trouble. When the man Elkanah went up with his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, After the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. Do what seems best to you, 
Elkanah, her husband, told her, Stay here until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord make good his word. So the woman stayed at home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. When they had slaughtered the bull, they brought the boy to Eli. And she said to him, As surely as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord, and he worshipped the Lord there. Here ends our first lesson from God's Word. Our second lesson for today is recorded in Paul's letter to the Christians in Corinth, his second letter, chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. And these words will also serve as the basis of our meditation on God's Word a little bit later in our service today. Paul writes, It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. With that same spirit of faith, We also believe and therefore speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. All this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly, We are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Here ends our second lesson from God's Word. Our verse for today, Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel for today is recorded in the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 17, verses 1 to 11a. These are the words of Jesus as he takes time before he's about to be put to death on the cross to pray for his disciples. Two things to note. One is Jesus talks about his glory, but before he enters glory, he must go through trouble. He must go through the cross. So also he prays for his disciples that they also will receive glory, but only after they first go through the cross. We hear Jesus' prayer. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. And I am coming to you. 
Here ends our gospel lesson. Praise be to you, O Christ. We continue now with our hymn of the day. Draw us to thee, number 170, on the hymns download site from NPH. Dear friends in Christ, we have some expressions that we use in our English language to speak of times in our life when we are under a lot of pressure, when we are feeling anxiety and stress in our lives and troubles are afflicting us. And many of those expressions, as I just used one of them, have the picture of being under weight or being under some burden as we speak of them. For example, sometimes we say, she is heavy with grief, or he has a heavy heart. Other times, maybe somebody might say, I have a lot of burdens in my life. Or we might say to one another, bear each other's burdens. We speak sometimes of our lives as being like dragging a ball and chain around. And we even use the expression, I have to get something off my chest as if there's this tremendous pressure that's just weighing upon us, pressing so hard that it's, it's literally squeezing the life out of us. Opposite of that, we use some expressions when things are going well in our life, when there is no anxiety. We might say, I feel as light as a feather. Or we might hear somebody say, I'm glad that burden has been taken off of my shoulders. It feels so good. Or we might even say, I feel like I'm walking on air today. Paul, in our text for today, uses those concepts. Only as so often it happens in Scripture, he jolts us with the things that he says are light and what he calls heavy. And that's because Jesus' Easter victory over death and his glory that he has promised to us completely reverses the way we perceive life. Let's take a look. First of all, what are some of the things that seem to be burdens to us in our lives? Well, if we look at the Apostle Paul, we find that there were things that, that he was burdened with. In fact, in the words just before our text, Paul writes this, We are hard-pressed on every side, perplexed, persecuted, struck down. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, always being given over to death for Jesus' sake. We don't have to look very far in Scripture to see that Paul was not exaggerating about his life. On many occasions, Paul had to flee the cities that he had gone to because terrible, crazy mobs were out to try to put him to death. In fact, one time he didn't make it. They took him outside the city and they stoned him to death. Literally stoned him to death. They left him thinking that he was dead. But by God's mercy and grace, he survived. There were frequent times when Paul felt the sting of the whip as his back was lacerated again and again by those sharp things at the end of those whips. Paul suffered hunger and exposure and exposure. And multiple times, Paul was shipwrecked so that he had to make it through the open seas to safety. Do you think that Paul never felt pressure from those things in his life? Do you think that Paul's body, which was broken by stones and ripped by whips, never ached and felt pain? Do you think that there weren't times in Paul's life when he would have given anything to just quit, thinking that, I just can't go on with this anymore? In fact, Paul even tells us that he, on multiple occasions, was bearing Christ's death in his body, which is just another way of saying that for Jesus' sake, he suffered enormously. Perhaps it's not to the same extent always, but we also have burdens that we bear, weights in our life. Some people, for example, right now are feeling the burden of not being able to visit with people 
or they're feeling the burden of being stuck at home. Many people have a heavy heart because they weren't allowed to graduate with their friends. Others have a heavy heart because they can't go to a funeral of someone that they love. Still others have a heavy heart because they can't sit next to someone that's ill and give them comfort. Still others are feeling the weight in their lives right now of the possibility of financial ruin as they can't pay their bills on a regular basis. And all of these pressures, all of these things that weigh heavily upon us, they cause stress, they cause anxiety. And then you add to that the burden of sins in our life and the weight of guilt that's on our shoulders just pressing us down and becoming a tightness in our chest so that it's literally sapping our life and the only thing we have left is to cry out for mercy and gasp for mercy. And then, too, there's the burden that we have that Paul had just because we're Christians. When we share the name of Jesus and the world hates us, sometimes attacking us verbally and sometimes even physically. But faith in Jesus makes what's heavy light. The Apostle Paul quotes from our text, uh, in our text from Psalm 116. And we don't know who wrote Psalm 116. We don't know when it was written. But what's clear is that whoever the psalmist was that wrote these words, when he wrote them, he was experiencing some, indeed, some serious burdens, some extreme weights in his life that were literally crushing the life out of him. He says, I was entangled by death. He says, that the anguish of the grave was upon him. He says that he was overwhelmed by trouble and sorrow. But in the midst of that all happening in his life, in the midst of these terrible pressures in his life, he still believed. He still had faith in his Lord. And he expresses it when he says, I believed, therefore I said, I am afflicted. In other words, he was saying that even in the midst of his afflictions, he still believed in the Lord. He still put his confidence in the Lord and prayed to him and called out to him for help. And the Lord answered his prayer. The Lord delivered him. He gave him the ability to bear up under the burdens that were in his life. The Apostle Paul who also wanted so desperately to keep on proclaiming the name of Jesus, who wanted to preach the gospel but was feeling hindered by the burdens and weights that he was carrying in his life, he also says, in the same spirit of faith, we believe and therefore we speak. If you go down to any bookstore and look at the shelves, you'll find all kinds of books that address the times in people's lives when they're in despair, when they're feeling the burdens and the weights of things in their lives. And those books purport to give us answers, to help us to get out of the despair, to find joy in our life and overcome it. And most of those books will likely point you to yourself. They will point you inside of yourself and suggest that what you need to do to get out of despair is find joy deep inside your heart to find good things there and dwell on the good things rather than the bad, and then you'll feel better. But does that really work? I know that when I look deep inside myself, I don't see such good things. When I look deep inside myself, I see a lot of things that nobody else knows about me, but that I'm not proud of. I see a lot of bad things that I've done. I see a lot of guilt there. And I see convincing evidence that when God says that I am corrupt in my sinful heart and sinful nature, he's absolutely right. But Paul doesn't point us inside of ourselves today. He says, in the spirit of faith. In other words, Paul says, we believe. We're going to trust in the Lord in this situation. And in the midst of that weight, he also says, because we know that the one who raised Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus 
and present us with you to himself. God raised Jesus from the dead because of our justification. That is, God raised Jesus from the dead to give us proof that he no longer counts our sins against us because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And because our sins are forgiven, God also promises to us that we will one day be with Jesus in glory in heaven. And so when the world is pressing upon us, when it seems like the life is being pressed out from us, and even if we face death because of the pressures and the anxieties that are coming upon us, we still have hope. We have hope because we can look forward to a life with Jesus, a life of glory because of what Jesus has done for us. And you see, when we understand that, that changes our whole perspective on life. And Paul expresses that change when he says, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. All the things that seem to be crushing us down, all the things that outwardly seem to be hurting our body so badly, they can't change who we are in Jesus Christ. And that's what Paul realized as he felt the stings and the, the broken bones and the hurt in his body. Yet in his spirit, buoyed up by the resurrection of Jesus and his promise of glory to come, Paul's spirit was strong. His spirit was free. His spirit was ever fuller of life, or ever more full of life day after day after day, being renewed, he says. And the same is true for us. As we struggle in our world, as we struggle with the effects of the economy that seems to be broken right now, as we so struggle with the effects of COVID-19, as we struggle with loneliness and its effects in our life, as we struggle with physical challenges in our own physical bodies, as we struggle with sin and everything else that we struggle with in our daily lives, we know that these things can't take away what faith clings to. And what faith clings to is eternal life. A life that we already have right now through faith in Jesus Christ, but a life which we will have in glory when all of this outward baggage of our life that weighs so heavily upon us is taken away. And when we understand that, then all of those things that were so heavy become light. The Apostle Paul expresses this change this way and stuns us with it. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that outweighs them all. Can you imagine that all of those things that Paul suffered would be called light, that is, insignificant, and that they would be called momentary? Don't our troubles and tribulations of life seem like they are very significant to us? Don't they seem like they last forever? But you see, take all of those troubles that we experience in life and place them in one pan of a scale and then take eternal glory that Jesus has gained for us through his resurrection in the other pan and the pan with the glory sinks down because there's nothing that compares to this glory. This glory is a glory that means no tears, no fears, no pain, no stain, no weight of trouble or sin. This glory is not a temporary thing. It's not a flash in the pan. It is an eternal glory, which is far beyond anything that's temporary of the troubles that we have in life. This glory is heavy. It is significant, it is important, and it is much superior to all the other troubles we have. 
we may think to ourselves, but I've suffered for a long time. It's been years and years and years that I've been suffering. But even if our suffering should last for a hundred years, what is that in comparison to an eternity of glory? You see, the Apostle Paul is telling us that this glory is just so significant, so weighty, so heavy, that it far outweighs anything in our life. It's far more important. It's far superior to anything else that we might suffer in life. What we call heavy, those troubles that we call heavy, the Apostle Paul calls those troubles light. And we can call them light, too, when we remember that those things can never steal from us the most important thing we have, the greatest glory that we will ever experience, eternal life with Jesus. And that life is guaranteed to us by Jesus' resurrection from the dead. So, dear friends, trust in Jesus Spiritually, climb on his back and hold on to him and cling to him so that every day, day by day, your certainty of that truth will grow and become new every single day. And so Paul says at the end that we can, along with Paul, hold on to and fix our focus not on the unseen, on the seen rather, but on what is unseen. What we see are the things of this world. We see our lives here on this earth. We see the money. We see the stuff that we have. We see our health. We see our friends. We see our job. We see our fame. But what happens to all of those things? They all disappear. The money goes away. The health declines no matter how much we try to keep it. But Paul says we should keep focused on what is unseen. That is, on spiritual things. On Jesus on heaven, on the family of believers. We live by faith, not by sight. Oh, we see plenty of troubles. We see the problems. We see the suffering. We feel the pain. But we need to focus not on all of those things because those things are temporary They're insignificant. In fact, Paul says that they are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. But the Apostle Paul isn't here telling us that if we suffer enough, then we'll earn our way into heaven. No, no, that's not what he's saying. He's saying that as we go through those struggles, as we go through those difficulties that weigh heavily upon us, they keep us focused. They keep us focused on the right thing. And that right thing is Jesus. Jesus who grants to us that glory that is yet to come. So don't focus on what you can see. Focus rather on what God's word reveals to us. Focus on the heavy, the important, the significant, on the glory that is yours because of Jesus and what he's done for you. And that is definitely coming. Amen. I invite you now to click on the link for the next song that will be sung. It is, I Will Rise by the MLC Choir. There are no words printed for this, but you'll see them on the screen so that you can meditate them as you, on them as you listen to the choir singing this hymn. Let us join now in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As indicated, you can still send in your offerings by mail, but we do have an opportunity now through the Zelle uh, app on your phone that you can send in online offerings. And if you have not received it, you will be receiving a newsletter in the next couple of days. And that newsletter will have information on how you can go about doing that. Let us now join in the, our prayer of the church, followed by our Lord's Prayer. We bow our heads in prayer. O Lord God, we praise you today for the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We praise you that you have communicated to us through that resurrection that you have accepted the work our Savior did for us, that he completed it and brought you glory. And now we have that glory, O Lord, because we are connected with Christ by faith. And though in this world we still suffer, O Lord, though in this world there are troubles that weigh heavily on our hearts and our minds and our bodies, yet we know that because of Jesus these are light and temporary and that we have an eternal glory that's awaiting for us in heaven. Thank you for giving us that confidence today through your word. And we ask you to let that confidence change the way we live in this world and our perspective. Instead of complaining about the troubles that our world is in right now, help us to trust in you and share our joy in you. Instead of demanding our rights, O oh Lord, help us to be patient and help us to wait until the time that you set for us to do whatever it is you have for us to do. Grant us, O oh Lord, if it is your will, the opportunity soon to come back and worship together again, that together with the body of Christ we may glorify you and your Son, Jesus Christ. And most of all, we pray that you would continue to bring eternal life to the world through the knowledge of you and Jesus as the Savior of the world. And in his name, we also now join to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn for today is, Lord, when your glory I shall see. It is number 219, which is not on the hymn's download page. But today, you can join singing if you'd like with the seminary choir, or you may simply meditate on, on this hymn as you see the words there in the choir sings. Again, I'd like to express my joy in worshiping with you today. Glad that you could join us. If you're a guest with us, we're so happy you were able to join us in this virtual service. We hope that soon you'll be able to join us here in our chapel as we join together once more physically in this house of worship. There is an announcement that is supposed to be made on Monday from our governor about the opportunity to come back together again. Please watch your emails and we'll let you know as soon as we do whether or not that's going to be sooner than later and how we would have to go about that. So everything's still a little bit unknown, but soon it looks like we may be able to put a plan in place to come back together again. Until then, we continue to worship virtually. Watch each week for the email with the information, or you can go to our Facebook page or our website, ziontorrance.org, ziontorrance.org. May God bless you until we meet again.